Hi everybody, it's Andy Phillips here and uh, welcome to uh, this one, uh, well it's meet the host today, um, Thursday at 11 o'clock, it is Thursday isn't it, I'm losing track of time with lockdown and everything else, it's, it's all going mad, uh, we've got uh, Abs and Adam, now tell us which uh, which uh, uh, pin meeting that, that you run, you're the host of which pin meeting? Uh, Kensington Pen. Kensington, okay. Um, and we, we, what we try and do with these is to you know, we, the reason why we do meet the host is because there's a lot of people who sort of uh, want to go to pin meetings. They want to start coming coming along. They may have never come before, and so we want to sort of you know sort of introduce you guys and uh, these friendly faces at the front of the room that you can actually go and say hello to. <laughs> that's the that's the key to this. Um, but I've wanted to sort of get into. I don't know which one who wants to answer this first, but um, for both of you, what what sort of brought got you into property in the first place? Because property is a bit of a um, bit of a step from from the things. So what were you doing before, and what, what did you get? Into, how did you get into property? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, I'll go first, I guess. Uh, so before property, I used to be a pharmacist, so a trained pharmacist uh, in your kind of local chemist giving out the medicines, uh, which was, yeah, it was good. I you know, enjoyed university, enjoyed a, a few years of pharmacy as well, became a manager, you know, went up the ranks. Uh, and then, um, yeah, just decided that uh, in terms of scalability wise, um, I think there was a lot more opportunity in property. Uh, and I've always had a love for kind of buildings and architecture and and I love the whole uh, creating assets for the future so I thought make the plunge and move into property so yeah I was a I was a licensed drug dealer beforehand so, yeah. right well but what are you abs uh, yeah I used to work in the advertising industry so oh, um, okay. yeah project manager for creative digital campaigns um so just basically kind of from the idea all the way through to building it out whether it be development and stuff so i used to project manage the creative design and um, the creating of these interesting campaigns for some really really good clients that we used to have um and yeah i guess similarly you know it was an enjoyable role um but it's hard to achieve it's yeah it's not very scalable as, as adam said in order you know to do what exactly what you want to do build assets you know financial fortress um, it just didn't seem to, the quick way to, to go about it. I mean, there's no quick way, but uh, it's yeah, it wasn't it wasn't very scalable. So that's why you've got, you've got to take a step to do something different. You know, if you want to yeah. change the way you're, uh, it, it, but you're doing it for things like you know, was you thinking a, a, a lot ahead to things like pension and you know lifestyle later on in life and that sort of thing, or was it something which was a bit more immediate? You know, you just wanted to get more me more income or something. What was the the sort of thought behind it behind getting into property in the first place? Yeah, I think in probably more uh, long-term thinking in terms of assets, just so we can buy, hold, and you know, or build build businesses that we can hold for the future. Um, and yeah, just 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 keep it for, forever, really. Um, yeah. It'd be very long-term thinking. It's it's more of our game sort of thing. Yeah. I think in terms of lifestyle, we weren't really looking for a kind of relaxed lifestyle and kind of, you know retire early. We, we like working, so um, yeah, it's pretty much just something more interesting and is very you know can be quite lucrative as well um yeah no, we don't really plan to retire or anything we just want to keep working but doing higher 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 level stuff was it was it the sort of um because i mean the, the the sort of thing when i got into property it was my my attitude was yes i can make some money now i can flip some properties i can do refurbs and flips and earn some cash and that sort of thing and at the time when i started it was you know you did was doing no money down deals and getting paid for buying and you know <laughs> like the wild west when i first started um but a lot of the things some of the things that was in my mind was um although i've got like um i was working in corporate and i was i was thinking well i've got a pension i can i can sit back on you know at some point um it wasn't going to be that great you know <laughs> and and so i was i was actually thinking of you know you know my retirement my future um with property did that, did that sort of come into your mind at all yeah no yeah no yeah definitely um yeah it's just yeah it just didn't seem like long term wise it's going to hold out very well um uh, you know so you're going to have to really work up the ranks and make sure you are very you know strategic with saving and and doing alternative investments investments perhaps but um in order to build like real wealth um and also just to really care for yourself and your family in the future in terms of, you know, for whatever could happen. Um, 
yeah, we really think yeah, property is, is, is the main way for us to go and it's really enjoyable as well. Cool. Excellent. So what's the sort of things that you do? What's what's your, your game plan? Um, what strategies do you use? What, what do you call yourselves? Would you, would, you know, are you HMOers or rent to renters? And... Yeah, so, uh, I guess we were. We first started doing rent to rent. Uh, was our, like a lot, lot of people are starting point rent to rents. Um, then after that, uh, we, well, so we have a management business. So we manage uh, single lets, multi lets, some blocks of flats as well in London. We've done some refurbs and developments. Um, so I guess so mostly we're property managers is our main thing, our management business. But we are looking now more to do a more development, some flips or deal packaging, um, mostly going into 2021 because uh, it's going to be a very interesting time coming up. So we're, we're kind of gearing up for the, the new year. Was that a new deal coming in, Adam? Uh, <laughs> I think it was a plumber. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I on, on uh, Do Not Disturb, but I think if you call multiple times, they actually get through. So, yeah, sorry about no. that. <laughs> um, but, yeah, like, uh, me and Abs are on the same page in terms of what our kind of plan is. So, um, yeah, uh, we've got a lot to go, I think. But we've done all right so far, but definitely looking to do maybe developments and stuff in the future is, is really what we're looking for. Yeah, so, so that's that's sort of the, the, the next step. And so if you, do you have a sort of game plan where you're going with all this stuff? You know, do you, do you think, I'm going to do this, then we're going to have a look at this, and then we'll have a look at this? Yeah, uh, no. I think, oh, sorry. Good friend. Yeah, we're, we're generally looking with... We want to build like a group of you know various property companies uh right. all kind of independent or can feed into each other which would be great um yeah uh, and if we can step back and just manage it that would be you know the, the, the end plan really it's just a group of property companies what's the sort of biggest challenges that you've, you've come across you know i mean obviously you're you're, you're very focused about, about what you're doing with your management side and things like that but what's the what's the sort of biggest challenges that you've had to sort of overcome especially at the start of your journey yeah i think at the start is gaining credibility um especially as you know we're both say from an advertising and a pharmacy background and when we were approaching, say, landlords at the, at the start, you know, you know like, oh, so Mr. Pharmacist and Mr. Advertising Man, you, you want to look after my property, you know. So that was yeah. probably the, the first hurdle, uh, even like for the first year or two, was the, the constant having to prove yourself to new landlords and stuff that you are responsible, you know what you're talking about, you can deliver, you know, it's a young company. So it, that was probably the, the initial biggest hurdle. Because once you get rolling after a few years and you've got loads of properties and case studies and landlords to refer to, it's really just you know, some cases you just got to turn up and pick up the keys at some point. Yeah. Um, sometimes you don't you don't really have to prove yourself anymore because yeah, you just yeah. have a track record. And um, you know, once they ask you a question about property, you just you know pretty much everything of your field. So that was that was the first. Um, stumbling block and i'm sure a lot of people have have that initially if they, they're starting off in property yeah i think it's the power, yeah. yeah power of referrals and stuff the, you know these days when you just get a referral from someone that you know someone trusts someone so they oh, we've used these guys before yeah i think you should use them pretty much you just show up and pick up the keys really so it's um yeah it can it just it's a snowball it takes time but you do you do get there in the end so with, I mean, it's, it's sort of the same with all businesses, isn't it? You know, when you first start up, you you don't have those case studies, you don't have those testimonials, you don't have those referrals and things like that, and, and uh, so it's a little bit tricky. So when you first started doing that, it was you had to convince those people <laughs> that you yeah. could do the job, yeah. and so and you obviously did a great job at it. So uh, and well, it, just, it, it just sort of gets to a point where it just sort of starts clicking over, and people will refer you, and you can you've got the case studies behind you. Yeah, I think you have to just you put yourself out there and have a bit of luck as well. You know, our first property that we took on uh, as a management was um, from a Facebook post that I did on my Facebook page. Right. Uh, one of my old uh, bosses at work, he pretty much, um, he got in touch with me months later saying, oh, I saw your post, my parents have a property. And then that's where it started from. So who would have thought that a, a Facebook post, your one single post would have would have given that opportunity? But it's the same sort of thing, you know, you actually go and do something and things can come out of it if you don't do those things. If you yeah. didn't put that post up, if you didn't take the action to do it in the first place, then that, the, the whole thing wouldn't have started. 
yeah, and the, the knock-on effects. And now we manage their whole portfolio. Uh, the, so one of their sons is our investor. Um, they've given our their family like referrals as well. It's uh, yeah, a lot of add-ons just from that one Facebook post. Yeah, yeah it definitely helps yeah. to be good at what you do as well, doesn't it? <laughs> Sorry. It sort of helps to be good at what you do as well. It does, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, honest and trustworthy. And yeah, so we just did the best we could for those uh, for that particular landlord, and it's definitely paid off for us. Uh, it's a fascinating story. Um, what was the reason for becoming pin host? Because pin, being a pin host is a lot of, you know, there's a lot of work involved, and you've got to, you know, get up front, front and talk in front of audiences and all the things that people hate. So why, why did you become a pin host in the first place? Um, I, go on, let's go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I think yeah. It's, I mean, it, for for us, you know, we have been going to pin for quite for quite a while. You know, we know how it works. Uh, we're familiar with it. But also, you know, it's for us as well for networking because uh, to be honest, if we were left to our own devices, we would pretty much stay on our computers and not talk to anyone and just crack on with work. So it really pin kind of pushed us to the front of the stage. You know, to get out there, meet people, to network as well, and you know. The opportunities that come from being part of an organization like PIN and also being particularly being the host of it, um, it's, you know, it's good for us, our business, but also it's really nice to see uh, how it works for other individuals as well. So it's, it's quite fulfilling in, in numerous ways. Yeah, and as well, just seeing how we do get a lot of new, newbies come to the meetings, you're just getting started and you know, we can uh, resonate with them because you know, we were in their shoes right at the beginning and you know they can ask for advice and help and guidance and yeah if we can provide it then we will and yeah happy to help people on their property journeys so. yeah, it's quite amazing the the, the sort of generosity at, uh, at these sort of meetings you sort of think that i think that there's there's uh, when people first look at this they they see a property meeting and they, they have this this mental picture in their mind of it's just all you know fat businessmen <laughs> You know, all trying to rip off everybody, <laughs> but it's, it, the, the, the truth is completely different. It's just like everyday people just trying to trying to sort of do something a little bit different to trying to get a different result in their lives and things like. And there's a lot of people who are starting up. There's at pin meetings. There's a lot of people that have been doing it for a little while, but there's a lot of experienced people in those pin meetings as well. That the and 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 they're very generous with their time. They're very generous with the the you know their their knowledge as well helping people out and stuff like that and i think that's what makes uh, these meetings not just pin meetings but you know the good property meetings around the country uh it makes them uh, a really cool place to be you know it's, it's a nice place to go and visit and a nice place to there's a lot of good people out there basically yeah definitely yeah i think definitely pin attracts the i would say more um ethically sound uh, individuals um and yeah we've worked with people from our meetings as well we've done deals with people from our meetings so great environment and you know we wouldn't have come across those those opportunities unless we were you know in the room and networking and meeting those people so yeah it's interesting that uh, you were saying abs that the uh the reason why you went in to do the pin meeting is um it's it's sort of uh a, it's taken you out of your comfort zone you know because obviously you know you said you know you, if you didn't do that you'd probably be sitting behind your computers working and things like that and it's uh it was interesting that you know you sort of you thought about this and if i if we go and do that we have to go and talk to people we have to go out and we have to go and do these things and get out of the comfort zone a little bit um and i think that's that's what these pin meetings are they're good i mean it'd be great when we could get back into the hotels and yeah uh, and do that because that that's when it really sort of makes but the, the 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 online pin meetings are really good as well i mean i've been on quite a few of them um and uh they are really really good <laughs> they're really good it's a different technical challenge though isn't it yeah yeah i mean yeah it's, it's, i guess yeah there's some some little bit some hurdles get through but it really does open up for individuals who want to see their speaker and you know, normally they might be on the other side of the country, but whereas they can see them now, so it's it's really kind of added some you know liberal element to it. So you know you can see who you want to see really yeah. just from from your home. So in terms of getting the content from the speakers, it's it's really good. Yeah, um, it, yeah, yeah. There's a silver lining with it all. Yeah, I think there's there's going to be a, a sort of a, a change in the way we do things. Where we, I think we'll start doing a lot more sort of virtual stuff as well because it's it sort of makes sense to do that you know it's good to good to see these different speakers that you'd never go never be able to see you know because some some speakers are, are way up north and they don't really want to travel all the way down to 
to you know even further than Birmingham, some of them. Um, yeah. and it's also, you know, London speakers or uh, you know speakers around the sort of southeast and stuff like that. It's finding it very difficult to get up north and because you it's, you don't get paid for this. You know, <laughs> you you travel all the way up there. I and mean, I've been up to I've, I've I've spoken at Hull and places like that. You know, and um, that's a big old journey. <laughs> oh, yeah. day. I mean, it's like you know it's like 16 hours in the car sort of thing yeah i think it'd be, it'd be really good so we, we're going to wrap up now but um just around this off yeah have you got any sort of i mean there's loads of people that have, that have uh are literally just starting this they might be watching this for the first time they uh maybe thinking about getting in a property have you got any sort of, sort of tips or tricks that um, may help them, uh, you know, especially brand new people? Um, I'd say for me, it would be just, um, uh, I guess, it's about thinking about your reason why you're doing this um, and then maybe linking that to what you'd like to do in property or if you have an idea of what you'd like to do. Because I think as we see a lot of people go into different strategies which they are not fond of just because, you know, it's, it's easier or they think it's a, a more lucrative. But I would definitely say try and place yourself where you'd actually you'd like to be doing something day in day out um, and perhaps even look at the wealth wealth dynamics which is um, to see what kind of personality you are and how that fits in different property strategies that's, uh, that's a good one yeah it's interesting to find out so i mean wealth dynamics is, is i think some people sort of think of it as a little bit fluffy but it's it's actually key to growing your business if you if you know yeah. where you fit in a business it's actually easier to find people to work around you that aren't the same as you because it's not it's not good to work with people that are exactly the same as you. You need some some people that are, are different. So that's a, that's a really good tip. Yeah. Labs. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess um, for me, I guess probably asking when you do go to these pen meetings and you meet other individuals who are investing or maybe doing what you want to do, um, just feel free to ask you know ask them for you know their advice and stuff. Also, do consider as well like is there some way that you can help them even in any you know small way whether for example if you know a little bit about marketing or advertising or you can help with viewings for example uh just because you know if you are say if you do have quite a lot of knowledge you do get sometimes a lot of requests but if you do say oh i this is what i can help with that might be just what that person needs um and i i know i've I talked to a few people who have come to me and said oh i'd like to learn what you know um, and I don't charge for it. It's just because that they happen to actually know something I want to know. Um, so I think really do consider what your what you have to to offer, just in a small way to help. And then other individuals will be happy to help you in return. Yeah, it's happy. It's, 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 a, it's a good uh, a good thing to point out that there's there's transferable skills, the stuff that people were doing before. It's like you, Abs. If you're in marketing, um, people in the property industry need to market themselves out i mean it's you you get to the point where you've you've taken out all the low-hanging fruit all the people around you at some point you're going to have to go out and find new investors or you know new people that you don't know and that's well, that's basically marketing that's advertising so it's there are transferable skills so basically what you're saying is that if someone goes to a pin meeting they don't think they've got anything to offer what are you doing at the moment could be a good transferable skill you know just time giving people some time um could be a good idea so that's brilliant listen guys we've, we've sort of run out of time it's been fantastic speaking to you um do you know when do you know when you're on next um, oh we just had our pin meeting yesterday so oh, gonna, right. yeah yeah so, yeah, so you've, got, you've got another one next month yeah yeah next month still so, yeah. so we'll keep an eye out for that and as you say i mean you can you can book onto any of these pin meetings now um pick the speakers and go and see yeah. see which ones you want so uh listen guys it, we, we'll we'll get you back on to uh on to pin community uh with uh some other advice you know you can maybe sort of talk about your business a little bit more in depth and things like that but for now thanks very much and uh, we'll see everybody later brilliant, brilliant. Cheers. Cheers. see you later guys bye-bye